So hello there. Today we are going to be talking about the general case of forces in a plane. That is the part of the engineering mechanics. In previous series of video lectures we have seen what is the concurrent force and what is the parallel forces. But clearly they are acting in a single plane. So according to that we have developed certain kind of theories and the fundamentals and we try to solve certain kind of the problems. So in this case what is the difference between these two I want to say. When the concurrent forces are acting on your body it means that all the forces which are acting on your body is passing through the same point. That means they are maintaining the one point then we can say that is the concurrent forces. And the parallel forces these forces are not going to be intersecting and they are maintaining the parallel to each other throughout the process of execution. Then we can say they are going to be parallel to each other. But they all existed in a single plane. But today we are going to be talking about these forces also existed in the same plane but they are not intersecting, they are not in the parallel to each other. So then what kind of equations we need to develop it, that's we are going to be checking. So here the topic is general case of forces in a plane. So what is the definition, that means what is the statement he has given to understand what is the uh, general case of forces. In several forces, if several forces acting, that means the system is going to be subjected to the several forces in a particular plane. So that means suppose you can take this boat and this is going to be subjected to the different types of the forces but they existed in the same plane. So if several forces acting in a plane are such that they do not intersect, that means those forces do not intersect at one point. They are intersecting but they are not going to intersect at one point. So they are not going to be intersecting at one point and are not parallel. That means they are not parallel to each other. They are intersecting at individual levels but not at a common point and at the same time they are not parallel. Then they represent the general system of coplanar forces. Such a situation we are representing the general system of coplanar forces. So these are generally all engineering materials or engineering components are going to be subjected to these kind of forces. So now I am going to be draw the same in terms of the pictorially, we will try to understand how we get able to solve it. The here, that is the pictorial view. So I am going to be taking a one rigid body here. So the total engineering mechanics is, deals with the rigid bodies only, right? This is one arbitrary shape of a rigid body I have taken and made to subject it to the several forces as per the definition. These several forces are going to be F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, like that number of forces are going to be acting. So then what, what he said, they are not going to be intersecting at one point and they are not going to be parallel to each other. So that what I am going to be taking here, to understand that whether they are going to be intersecting or not, I am going to be taking the, the line of actions of these forces. This is going to be your F1 extending this direction, this is going to be extending this direction, these are going to be the lines of action which is acting in the direction. So then. F3 is going to be acting here, F4 is going to be going like this and F5 is going to be going like this. So can you see, each and every points are going to be intersecting but they are not going in a common point like a concurrent forces. Then we can say these are going to be general case of the forces in a plane. At the same time, they are not going to be parallel to each other. So I hope the definition is going to be clear. So in this case what will happen? Then how would you resolve it? Because this body is not going to be fixed, it is going to be it is the free body, then the forces are going to be acting. Then when the body is going to be free, so then forces are going to be acting, it is very clear that the body is trying to move in the same direction of the forces. In this case what will happen, there are the several forces are there, we need to calculate the resultant component of the force. At the same time, we need to find out the direction of the resultant component. At the same time, we need to find out the line of action means we need to apply this part. That means the moments we need to find out and then we need to get the, the lines of actions of the body, how we can do it that way. Now I am going to be, by three cases I am going to be taking to resolve these equations. So before going to a discussion of that, that what I am going to do, because it is going to be existed in the same plane, right? So then what will happen, I am going to be taking one convenient coordinate system I am going to be considering here, that is going to be the y axis as well as the x axis I am going to be taking. So when I am going to be taking the x and the y axis, then it is going to be very clear that with the help of this horizontal axis and the vertical axis, these forces are going to be resolved into x axis as well as the y axis, the y component, x component as well as the y component. That means these forces are going to be consist of the uh, different types of the components we do have. Suppose F1 we do have. So then it is going to be making an angle, suppose. So then 
I'm resolving this F1 force into the y direction. Suppose I'm going to be taking the F1 to this position. Suppose A point. Suppose the point at A. This is the F1 force is going to be acting. So then I'm going to be resolving this force into the x direction as well as the y direction. That is going, I'm going to say x1, fy1 we do have. Similarly, at point 2 we do have. So that I'm going to say the point B. So this is going to be the point B. That force is going to be acting towards this side. So this is going to be your F2. This force I'm going to be resolving to the x component as well as the y component. So this is going to be your Fx2 and this is going to be Fy2. It is going to be consist of, suppose in this case Fx1 is equal to, it is going to be making an angle theta. So this Fx1 is equal to F1 cos theta. Fy is equal to F1 sin theta. You got it? This way we are going to be identifying the Fx1, Fx2, Fy1 and Fy2 forces we are going to be calculating. Similarly, F3 force is going to be acting at this point. That is going to be the point C. So in this case, this is the point C. The force is going to be coming in this direction. So in this case also we are going to be taking theta. Resolving the forces into vertical forces at the same time or general forces. This is going to be Fx3, Fy3 forces we do have. And similarly at the point D, suppose this is the point, sorry, this is the point D, it is moving in the downward direction. Suppose this is the F4, there is no horizontal component for this part. And similarly for this part, it is going to be moving F5. So in this case, there is no vertical components. So according to that inclination to the horizontal plane or the vertical plane, we are going to be identifying these are the forces, we are resolving the forces into X component as well as the Y component. So that finally I am going to write in Fx1, Fx2, Fx3. These are the forces of the consist of in the X component. And similarly, Fy1, Fy2, Fy3 and the number of forces are going to be. It is going to be clear that when I am going to be resolving these forces in X component and the Y component, I am going to be getting in this direction, that is going to be, suppose this is going to be the Y as well as the X. This is, I am going to be saying Fx1, Fx2, Fx3, Fx4. And similarly, Fy1, Fy2, Fy3. And like that we will get it. So that means it is very clear that we resolve these forces into X component as well as the Y component. Now it is going to be clear that we can convert into that is in terms of the resultant component. To find out the resultant component, we are trying to take the three cases. The case one, I am going to be explaining here. Let the system of forces reduce us to a single resultant force, where are, whose the components are going to be Fx as well as the Fy respectively. This is already we have seen in our concurrent forces as well as the parallel forces. So how could you calculate the R value? That's R is going to be the resultant component. So then what will happen? So in this case, that's we do have that is going to be fx square plus fy square. So that means the summation of the forces in the horizontal direction, some of the summation of the forces in the vertical direction. There we can see here horizontal component is going to be consist of fx1, fx2. These forces are moving. That means these total forces I have reduced it into two components. One is going to be x component, one is the y component. So in this case, fx is equal to be what we are going to be getting. I am assuming this is the resultant force in the x direction. This is the resultant force in the y direction. And this is the resultant component of these two forces we are going to be calculating. So fx is equal to fx1 plus fx2 plus fx3 like that. Number of several forces we are going to have. And similarly, fy is equal to fy1 plus fy2 plus fy3 like this. So several forces we do have. So from this one, we got it the horizontal as well as the vertical. At the same time, we have seen the resultant component is going to be coming. Then which direction it is going to be acting? That means the body is not moving in the x direction, not in the y direction. But rather than it is trying to move in the, in the resultant component. So for this one, we need to calculate the inclination. So how do you calculate the inclination here? That's going to be tan theta is equal to the forces in the y direction by that means the total forces in the y direction by the forces in the 
x direction. So this way we are going to be calculating the a theta. So then automatically that your resultant component is going to be moving in this direction. So this can you see the finally that body is going to be we converted into that point into the resultant component. Can you see? So this way we have converted the several forces into two forces, the two forces converted into a, a single resultant force. This way we are going to be identifying the several forces into a, a single force. Yeah, once we calculated the magnitude of the resultant component and the inclination to the horizontal plane also we have calculated. Suppose you want to find out the line of action. So then what we want to do, we will use the, the moments of equation by using the Verignano theorem. That's already we have discussed it in the moments of the force. So then final equations I'm going to be writing, that's the total moment that's going to be MO at the point O is equal to. So that means the resultant, this is going to be the moments of the the moments of a force about a point is equal to the, the sum of the moments of these components. So, right? So, for this one, MO1 plus MO2, the plus or minus, it uh, depends on the, the direction we are uh, assuming we, we will get it. MO. So, plus like this we are getting. So, in this case, M1 means what we are going to be getting, that's going to be R into the perpendicular distance we need to take it. That is equal to F1 D1 plus F2 D2 plus F3 D3 so on and so on. So this way we are going to be calculating the line of action of this resultant force. That's this is going to be the resultant force. This is this moment is going to be generating because of the resultant component of this force. Right? So once we have the magnitude, then we can calculate the, the resultant component. And here also the because this force is going to be generating the moments and this is going to be the second force is going to be generating the moments third force is going to be like this fourth and fifth force is also like that so in this case what will happen the summation of the moments and this is going to be the resultant moment the resultant moment about a point is equal to the summation of the moments about the same point we are going to be considering this way we are going to be calculating the, the moments of the force so here is the second case we are going to be talking. In the first case, what will happen? The total forces we are going to be converted into a single force that is the result in Fx and F1. In this case, what will happen? The system of the forces reduces to a single couple. So in this case, what will happen? We are converting the system of the forces. That means the group of the forces we are reducing to a, a couple here. So that means as a couple is a system of two equal unlike parallel forces whose resultant is going to be zero. So if you want to generate a couple means, we need to find out. So in this case, the finally, we do have find out the resultant component here. So then we need to convert that in, in terms of the in terms of the couple. Then what will happen? We need to find out the, uh, that is going to be two equal and unlike forces we need to generate. That procedure also we do have seen. We are going to be taking a certain point and then this point is going to be two, two, two forces are going to be acting in this direction. By combination of this as well as the this, then what will happen? This body is going to be subjected to. So at the point A, suppose the B, at point B, the coupled force is going to be generated. And the force is going to be this way. We are going to be converting into a single coupled forces in this case. For this one, what, what I'm going to be doing? Sigma f of xi is equal to zero. Sigma fy y equal to zero and sigma m is equal to m i we are going to be considering this way we are going to be reducing the system of the forces into a, a single couple forces so in case three so the system is in the equilibrium conditions already we have seen the same condition for the system of the forces that is concurrent forces and parallel forces when the system of the forces in the equilibrium conditions, what is what we are going to be getting? So that means the resultant component R is equal to zero. We will get it. So once it is R means that is equal to the square root of sigma f x square plus sigma f y square. In this case, individual levels also we are going to be making equal to zero. Already we seen this is going to be the the resultant of the x axis plane, and this is going to be the resultant of the y component forces. So then and y is equal to 0. Once it is going to be, then we can calculate the other 
unknown parameters in that given what are the forces are acting on that system and similarly the moments are going to be acting in this is equal to zero we are going to be taking so in this case what will happen sigma f of x sigma f of y as well as the moments acting on a body is going to be equal to zero then we can say the system is going to be in the equilibrium conditions so this way we are going to be identifying the resultant component the general cases of the forces by using the three methods first we resulted that convert into a single force a single couple and that body is going to be in the equilibrium conditions that we have taken